What's up, Dab Nums? I hope, I sincerely hope, that you can see me now. Because if you can't see me, then you cannot see the chessboard either. And we are here for another lovely round of what we here at Chess24 like to call Banter Blitz. Bit of a weird name, but it's, it's too late to change it now, isn't it? Like, I don't know. Like, talkative chess? Probably not an improvement. Anyway, my name is Jan Gustafsson. I am a chess grandmaster. I'm also hungry, because I did not have a lot of stuff for breakfast. I only had... Do you guys have skier in, like, the non-German places? It's probably originally from Iceland. Or at least it says it's made according to an Icelandic recipe. And I know it's around in Scandinavia, but I got addicted to it. However, I do think that it's probably not the only source of nutrition one should have. And today, all I had was one small skier, which is like yogurt, basically. Anyway, after I shared that very important information for, with you, um, what else is there? Oh, we're approaching episode 100, 100. I feel... I feel it's a lot of pressure, like I read all these comments. Oh, are you gonna do something special? What special do you think I'm gonna do? I sit here all by myself talking total nonsense. Um, and I'm pretty sure episode 100 will be the same thing. So lower your expectations, people. It's like with online dating. Um, not that I would know anything about that. I'm also reading the chat, which, because I like to interact. That, of course, is a lie, but I am reading the chat. Is your family from Iceland originally? Is a question by Daf Benoni. No, it is not. I have Swedish great grand. A Swedish great grandmother. I always get it wrong. Grandfather or grandmother. Well, that's where the Gustafsson name is from. But no, no family in Iceland. I've been there, however. What else is going on? Easy Rider, did you manage to. Fry your fish in your pan, because that's what I'm planning to do when I start my first game. I want to put a fish in the pan. As for the rules, I haven't changed, because we never do anything special around here. Therefore, challenge me to a game of 5-minute blitz. And then, if you are a Chess24 Premium member, which Stavre Kuroveshi is not, so I can't accept him, then I might accept you and we might play a lovely game of chess. Because what's more fun? Then a little chess. Hmm. Could you guys think of anything, really? Let us play Darth Benoni himself. What's, what's that Darth Benoni name about? I'm familiar with Darth Vader and Darth Maul. Probably I should know more Darthus, but those are the only two that comes to mind. I'm also familiar with the Benoni, which is a horrible chess opening. So, are you saying that the Benoni represents what Darth Vader represents to the Star Wars universe? Basically, all that's wrong and evil with this world. Or, now, given your choice of the King's Gambit, I have a feeling that you do like horrible, horrible openings and horrible, horrible people. And therefore, it's probably an homage to Darth Vader that you called yourself Darth Benoni. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but for now we will play the move knight to f6. And shout out here to my friend Ivan Salgado, Spanish. Strong Grandmaster. I think I can condescendingly call him Strong Grandmaster because he's like five points lower rated than me. And I'm not sure. He's a better player between you and me. But he wrote a book which I purchased on the Kindle about the move knight to f6 in this position. And I believe his book is pretty much a refutation. Not that, that what we needed more refutations, but I still believe it is one of the King's Gambit. So if you're looking for a refutation of the King's Gambit, and it's not enough for you to take my word that after g5, h6, knight e7, knight f6, d5, and bishop e7, you're fine in the position after knight f3, then you should by all means check out Ivan's book. And Ivan, if you're watching this. I think, with this massive plug. You are indebted to me, I would not say forever, but yeah, pretty much forever. 
Anyway, I can't remember if this line has been covered or not. After queen e2, what looks logical? I could take here, or I could develop a piece, or I could develop the bishop. Looks like Darth Benoni is way ahead of me in his studies of stuff. You know what? I'll go here. Doesn't that look logical? Transfer my knight to e6. I'm gonna have to consult Mr. Salgado's book, but I've been told that it's wrong to consult outside sources while playing games. I believe that is still the understanding. What do I do here? C5 looks fairly logical. He could take. Uh oh, uh oh. There's this, what do you call these? These eggshells we put on the windows in the studio. And since I'm extremely clumsy putting them up and making them stay there, and no one else ever enters this studio because it's a bit of a dungeon. And they normally fall down during the show. And first of all, it might change the lighting slightly. Only slightly, because normally it's dark outside in Hamburg in August anyway. So you can't really tell much of a difference. And secondly, um, it will scare me. Queen d3 is a very weird move. Maybe a good move, but still very weird. I would not have thought of that, and I am very confused now. Bishop c5, knight c5, knight b4, is queen b5 check. d4 also comes to mind, another weird move. But nah, I hate giving pawns back. But queen d3 weirded me out enough to make me panic and develop a piece. Queen takes d5, really? No boundaries, Mr. Darth Benoni. Can I go queen b6? At some point I'll speed up, by the way, just so you know. But for now, I'm so chatty. I've been doing all this commentary in German that I barely remember how to do English, how to do English, period. Not sure about castles, but it felt important to finish development. I did get, I did give the pawn back, which breaks my heart. For those of you who are regulars to this program, giving back pawns to me is like, I don't know, having, ah, no, that's too graphic. <clears throat> I can't think of a comparison. I have a feeling the one thing I need on my way to become funny is think of comparisons, but not able to do it normally. Anyway, I don't like losing pawns, especially not extra pawns. No pawn left behind is my chess coat normally. Oof, the position is not even that clear. Should be clearer given the game started out as a King's Indian. I'm fine, but no more than fine. Very upsetting. Okay, time to... Time to make some moves. I also can't make moves. Queen e7 is such a dumb square. Queen a5 is where I'd like to go, but then, yeah, nah. You know what? Let's do it just for <laughs> laughs and giggles. Because sometimes, if you really want to do something, you might as well do it, even though it looks like you're stepping into a ridiculous discovered attack. Don't give in to peer pressure or bishop pressure. Follow your, I don't know, is it your instincts, your heart, your gut? Hmm. Okay, having said all that, still don't know what to do. Here maybe? Time to bring more pieces into the action. I might just lose on time. I keep, if I keep up the high level of banter and the low level of producing moves, the low rate of producing moves, this might end badly. Mm. Also, am I losing? That'd be another pity. <clears throat> okay, note to self, speed the F up.
No idea if this works, but it probably doesn't actually. It doesn't look like it works. We do not want to exchange queens that much. I'm fairly certain of. The problem is I have like zero pieces in the attack, which is often a problem if you're starting a lethal attack. You have zero attackers, then your attack might not succeed. Anyway, we made it here. Might as well continue Blitzing out moves. Hmm. Maybe b5, and if he takes rook b8, there's always cheapos. As long as there's cheapos, there is hope. Queen a3. Ooh. Is targeting my rook. I should keep that rook because rooks are goods. <sighs> Another very convincing. Oh, I was already mentally giving my speech about how great I turned it around. And then I blundered, not only rook e7, but also um, knight b4, queen takes b4, followed by rook to e8. Therefore, it might have been early for my victory lap. But it's so hard to time these victory laps correctly, isn't it? Now I'm fairly certain that I will win eventually. But I cannot say it was easy. Maybe it was never meant to be. Hmm. And Darth Benoni lose on time. Good game by Darth Benoni. Bad game by yours truly, but we're used to that. There's all that. I'm hungry and I need to wake up and I'm really a very, very strong chess player. You just can't tell by the fact that I constantly get outplayed by everybody. Um, all right, let's play another one. Now that we're all warmed up. Mm. Wow, Schweini 31. Schweini 31 is probably based on beloved German football or soccer, if you are American, player Bastian Schweinsteiger, who's probably not 31 anymore, let's face it. But maybe at the time Schweini 31 made his account, he thought, Currently, my hero, Bastian Schweinsteiger, is 31 years old and I do not expect him to age him. So that will be a good username to take me into the future. At least that's what I believe happened. Hang on, I did something. Just as I'm trying to Google Mr. Schweinsteiger's age, bad things happened. On a side note, I have a feeling my German accent when speaking English is getting worse. Or I'm not sure if it's German, but my weird accent. Ah, see, Schwein is 33. That all adds up. So Schweini 31 has been a user for two years. And back when Schweini was 31. Anyway, it looks like we're playing the Tarash defense. I don't know why. Because who in their right mind would play the Tarash defense and agree to suffering? And now people will tell me, but Gary Kasparov played it a lot in his youth, on his way to the first world championship match. He used it against Korchnoi and against 
Smyslov and against other people. And I will have no witty comeback. That's often the problem. I criticize an opening, and then I'm told. But so and so played it. And it shuts me up. It's a hard knock life. I don't even dislike the Tarash all that much. I wouldn't play it myself because you often end up with an isolated pawn and not that much activity for it. So it's a risky opening to play strategically. But it's not the worst opening ever invented. That title is still held by the King's Gambit. What do I do next? Knight a4 looks like a normal move, maybe. En route to c5 or preparing knight d4. Not sure if this is the way to do this. My hand wanted to move the queen somewhere. But you shouldn't trust the hand, as Daenerys Targaryen is surely finding out these days. I won't do a lot of spoilers. I also being informed that number 31 is the number on Schweinsteiger's shirt, so it might not be age related at all. Then I would have to stand corrected and never criticize the foresight of Schweini 31 in choosing that username again. Can I take on c6? I kind of want to. Not sure if it's the greatest move. The position is to offer, but I sort of want to do it. The problem is I'll be in exchange down. But. Sometimes you got to do what you want. I don't think this was a good idea necessarily, but as I said, if you want to, you gotta. You don't really want to unleash the dragon. I am a very gifted singer. I have been called the songbird of my generation by myself. So let's sum up. We have one pawn for the exchange, some chances of getting another one. But if he plays bishop d7, I'm not even sure I want to take c5. I don't understand at all because it's dropping this gentleman, which I could take. Or I could. Oof. So many choices. So many tempting choices. Knight c6 looks like a good move. Um, um, um. A8 is also good enough. It's not like anything's bad here. So knight c6, which for some reason I'm attracted to queen d1, rook d1, threatening knight e7 check. He would have to go, let's say, king h8. I'll just do it. Bishop a8 was probably objectively stronger, or even knight takes c5 look good. But I'm gonna continue the go with your gut strategy. Hang on, I should think. First, nah, I'll think later. Richard, think later. I'm thinking about king h8, and then some lines like knight to e7, which I'm not sure I'll do. But just hypothetically, knight e7, rook b8, bishop e5, rook, let's say b4. Then I would need something good, which I haven't seen yet. I maintain good compensation, if we can even call it compensation, because I have a pawn for the exchange and I can pick up another one. But I do not see a knockout blow just yet. I could also just take on a7 and on c5 and once again claim I has two pawns. I'm not material down, but I'm not sure if I'm better there. Rook e8 allows knight e7 if I want it. And you know what? I want it. Yeah, let's do this. He can't take on e2 because of bishop f6 followed by rook d8. So bishop g4 was very much to be expected. But this does not look like a good end game for a black. He's a pawn down. My pieces are active enough. This bishop on a7 doesn't do a whole lot. So if I manage not to blunder any tricks connected to Whatever tricks could be connected to here, I'll be doing all right. Not sure Bishop F6, F6, F6 was called for, but how bad can it be?
Just for educational purposes, I'll go knight d5. Because some of you might think, opposite color bishops, this has to be quite drawish. And I'm planning to argue that it's not that drawish. Some of you might say, okay, we understand it's not that drawish, but it was still a dumb decision. And that I'm not planning to argue against. You're probably right. But bottom line, with rooks still on the board, and weaknesses, such a position is pretty much lost for black, especially here. Since there's not a lot of activity for his bishop, I can always just go e3 and cripple it. So that is the very valuable lesson we can learn from this very, very valuable game. Another valuable lesson is take all these pawns. And therefore, Schweini31 resigns. Thank you for the game, Mr. Schweinsteiger. Do we have another potential opponent? Oh, a, a Fide Master. I believe that is what FM stands for. And I am fairly certain in that claim. Snoskoborowski. I should know who Snoskoborowski is, but I really don't. It's some historical chess figure, right? Snosko. Apart from the fact that it's fun to say Snosko Borowski. Snosko Borowski. He goes for d4 followed by c4. Eugene Alexandrovich Snosko Borowski, 1884 till 1954, was a Russian chess master, music and drama critic, author and teacher. Who knew? c5 I normally don't play, but I feel like mixing it against Snosko Borowski. My main move would, of course, be d5 in this position. Here, the problem is, well, there's many problems, but one problem is that after b5, e4 is a very strong pawn sacrifice, as far as I know. And, yeah, I don't know, well, well, do should that happen? Snosko Borowski, big expert on all these things. I don't even know how this line continues. I'll take first on that thing, the usual. But I do know that this is supposed to be good for white. I think Kramnik was one of the first to do it. And, yeah. There is reason for grave concern, not only because I know nothing John Snow style, but also because it looks quite scary. What do you do here? Knight d6 looks ridiculous, knight f6 looks less ridiculous, but maybe runs into some d6 business. Let me think about this here. Knight f6, d6, knight c6, queen e2 check is bad news. So f5 looks ridiculous too. Yeah, this, this line and I will probably not become friends. Even bishop e4 and queen h5 check. Bishop e4, I might have to go queen e7. Oof. Mm, I don't like you, you don't like me. It's unlikely that we'll ever be friends. I don't mean you, Mr. Snoskoborowski. I mean the line that I played. Mm. Okay, let me try to hang in there. Queen e2 is threatening f3, which is unfortunate. So I should go here, I guess, or is that losing to some d6 trickery? Could very well. Mm. If I go queen e7, still mildly concerned about d6 trickery. So what other options do I have? Queen a5 check looks ridiculous. C4, f3, we should be four check. Nah. Huh. King f7? <laughs> Not the prettiest move ever played. Nah, there must have been something better than king f7. Hmm. <laughs> that's what you get for playing dubious lines that I know to be dubious, but that's the only thing I know about. I know it's bad, but I don't know how to hang around 
So you must suffer a little bit once in a while if you commit such things against an experienced Fide master like Snosko Borowski. I have no idea if he's experienced, but that is the assumption I'm willing to work on. Oh, and finally, Karl Nehring is awake. Knight f3, all right, let's get some pieces out, shall we? I don't want him to check me, so I shall stop that. And I want to, I don't know what I want. I want to bring my king to relative safety. On g8, I don't know, I'm still not a fan of my position, but it feels like it was worse. Two, three moves ago. Rookie one. Rookie one, of course, I did not see coming. But did I have to see it coming? Did you have to let it linger? Kind of want to give this pawn. Who knows? But I'm saying but a lot. B U T, just to be clear. It's not the kind of show where we say B U T T. Why would you even think of B-U-T-T -T in this lovely position? What is this? Am I missing tricks? Don't trick me, Mr. Snoskoborowski. Like, knight takes c3, queen e8, queen e8, knight g5 check. Whoa, big tactician. <clears throat> That's unfair. People that see that level of tricks normally will checkmate me. <laughs> Sad but true. And just to rehearse here, knight takes c3, knight g5, or queen e8 followed by knight g5 is not great. So I'm in trouble. Obviously missed that move. Um, yeah, still in trouble. Staring at the position has not changed my outlook. <clears throat> this is not how I had imagined our mutual, mutual, mu, what a tough word, mutual future, Mr. Snoskoborowski. I'm also down on time, down on luck, Downing Street. It's a hard knock life. I want knight b4, but then a3, bishop a6, queen a4, my pieces are all over place, did not like it. So instead, let me try to get them boys activated via different channels. Ugh, no time for all this hesitating. Ah, King G8 feels odd, but I was getting too annoyed at the prospect of him giving all these checks. I'm mind-numbingly slow today. I really don't want to play G6 because of Bishop G5, but I can't think of anything better. Yeah, this has been another very poor sequence of moves. <clears throat> By yours truly. So complicated. Why are you doing this to you and me, Mr. Snosko? There's no time to calculate all this mess, is there?
Ugh, and I missed rook takes e8. Which is not that complicated. Oh boy. Oh, knight g5 checkmate. Not quite checkmate, but <clears throat> pretty much checkmate. <clears throat> I'd seen queen b3, rook b3, rook e8, king f7, and thought I was fine. But to start with rook e8, of course, did not cross my mind. Hmm. <laughs> Well, now he's giving me a second lease of life, isn't he? Now I have what I wanted. King takes f6 is coming. Rook b1 is in the air. Should e5 does not stop rook b1. And Snoskobrovsky resigns. Drama, baby. I had the feeling I tricked him here, but then after bishop f6, queen b3 was a little too greedy, maybe. After rook e8, king f7, he panicked, but he could just have played. Ah, no! Ah, that's the point. I thought he could just take here, but then I have queen d1 check, which of course I didn't see. And, but I'm sure that's what Mr. Snosko saw, and then, yeah, he couldn't find a move. Looks like there should be some move, but okay, that complicates things. Anyway, I got lucky, as I like to get. Thanks for the game, Mr. Snoskoborowski. And thanks for giving me an excuse to say Snoskoborowski a lot. Who's this guy? Tino12? A lot of strong players today. We'll, we'll get back to you low-rated players after this game. Because this is the show where we play against everybody. That is the motto. The show where we play interesting chess games. Because we are deep in the throes of Oggy Doggy. There is no longer any denying it. So we have to play. We have to pay homage to Scott Ackerman and we have to play interesting chess games. After G3, ugh. I already feel like my will to live leaving me when he plays the Catalan. I did a video series on all of this nonsense and I have a feeling I'm quite well versed in this stuff if I have to be, but you gotta be in the mood for it. It's hard to get in the mood for a good old equalizing session in the Catalan, especially if then they play a move like Rook D1 and I can't remember, sorry, what I'm supposed to do. It's a hard knock life. How does this go? Bishop C6. Knight c3, and I'm supposed to take on f3, right? Is this your pet line, Mr. Tino? I don't want to play your pet line. Can't I do something dumb to, like, confuse things? Bishop f3 is the correct move here, just for the record. I do know that, and I did recommend that in my video series. But I didn't feel like it. I want to get him out of the book and, like, do, do dumb stuff. So I went for this, which I believe qualifies as dumb. Um, let's see how the game shall proceed. e4, I should try not to blunder this bishop by playing knight d7, d5. So what could I do to avoid that fate? a5 maybe to go here with the horse. Knight e5, it's a bit of a worry. <clears throat> but there's always a price to pay for doing dumb stuff. That's what my long um, unsuccessful chess career has taught me. Don't do dumb stuff. You might regret it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Does not look great, does it? Normally the e8 square is not terrible for the bishop, but you really want your rook on d8 first. But somehow I mistimed stuff a little bit. Instead of knight a6, if I start with rook d8, maybe it's not that horrible. While now, of course, my pieces do not make a whole lot of sense. Mm. And Tino 12, bring pressure, torturing me, Catalan style. 95 back, not so sure about that. Not that sure, Tino. We have to be honest here. This is a place where we can give our honest opinions without hurting anybody's feelings. Then again, probably not true. And that's still 95 surprised me. I thought e5 was stronger. 
Not saying I have a great position now or anything. Just saying I'm still kind of alive, which is way more than I deserve after my opening treatment. But I'm well on my way of canceling out that hard survival work already with moves like bishop d6. Because I was playing knight b4, but then e5 is too painful to even look at. So instead, we're stuck with this position where the bishop on e8 is still not much of a beauty. But one day it will make a triumphant comeback. Not sure from where, but I have great faith in Mr. Bishop. Hmm. Not the most triumphant square. I shouldn't allow him to put his pawn on e5, at least that's what I concluded, because then both of his pieces get this lovely e4 square as a base for operations. Well, now, with the white pawn there, they do not have that base. Therefore, this position is actually probably okay for me. Now, my bishop has a clear view of the sights, and his pieces, without that e4 square, they're not, they're not doing that much. So yeah, de followed by f5. I'm not so sure, Mr. Tino. And Pramod NVS is trying to get me to spoil Game of Thrones by asking who will win the fight between Viserion and Drogon. I will not engage in your fake discussion. Pramod, not gonna be able to do it. And there's some talk about the terrorist attacks in Barcelona here. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in Barcelona. That was shocking, more shocking, that the village of Alcanar, where I grew up, I went to school in Alcanar. It's a small village, really. Like 10,000 people, maybe, was apparently uh, a site of the planning. And yeah, that was... Weird, huh? But yeah, shocking stuff. Love Barcelona, love Catalonia. <clears throat> and yeah, just sad to hear these things. What is going on in this game, Tino number 12? I have sort of outplayed you. I hope that doesn't hurt your feelings. Ever since bungling that opening. But the problem is, it's not enough to outplay people. You need to flag them too. Here 92 I missed already, of course. So back to square one. Back to square d8. Drifting. Rook dc1 and I have to do something clumsy. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay, ac1. I can't be bothered with looking at that pin anymore. So ever since claiming that I kind of outplayed you, You've kind of outplayed me back. And now we're even. Like, not the position is even, but we're even on the outplaying front. You're still worse, just to be clear. But at some point, I might have to do something sensible, maybe. Ooh, he's making me choose where to put Mr. Bishop. A6, F7. Hard to decide. I can't decide. G4 looks like a mistake. I don't know why. Just just looks like a mistake. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Am I losing on time? Looks like it might be time to start hurrying up a bit. And the problem is, this pawn is a little weak now. Therefore, the end games seem to favor yours truly. <clears throat> Checkmate it here. I'd rather not, to be frank. So 
so it's probably safest to keep my bishop on this diagonal because a check by the enemy bishop would be most unfortunate. But if I manage to do that, then it's gonna be very hard to hurt me, even with the h pawn on h6. I do not see the checkmate. Maybe it's there, but I don't see it. Covering this square, covering all kinds of squares. Bishop g6, but I would have a queen to roam around the premises. <laughs> Funny if that worked. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's give some checks first. <laughs> Oh, no time. Hmm. Okay, I could take on f5, but I don't want to. That is checkmate, sir. Hmm. Tino 12. Yeah, interesting game. <laughs> I sort of forgot about the clock there as I never do normally. But all's well that ends in me winning. That is my motto. Hmm. And now let's play Mr. Super Atomico. Super Atomico. Is that another Son Goku avatar? I have a feeling. I just played, or I tried to play, it says we never played a Son Goku avatar the other day. Not sure if that was you, Mr. Super Atomico, or another Dragon Ball Z fan. Because there's so many of you out there. As for this line, I know precious little bishop b4 as a move, bishop e7, or de4. I don't know anything about any of these moves. In this position, gf6 is also a legal line. Well, this bishop takes f6 has long had a reputation as being solid. I guess I'll, I'll do something. Hmm. How do you attack here? h4? Super Atomico is blitzing out the moves like he's been here a million times. Been there, done that. Hmm. Well, poor me. I'm stumbling. Making up stuff as I go along. Can't push these pawns on c5, probably. Uh, not in time. Or time to reach some boring endgame, but not for excitement. Not for drama. Mm -hmm. Ugh, queen f4 was a weird move. Now oh, he's queen d5. Ugh. Go to d3 at least. This is okay. This is what I was. Hoping to get, but queen d5 was much stronger. Targeting a2, then I would have to go king b1, then bishop d6, let's say. And I don't know what's going on. Well, now his rook is under attack and I can proceed pushing my own pawns up the board. Let's run. Hmm. I want to go g6 and then somehow checkmate super atomico. I might be well advised to make some preparatory, predatory, preparational. Preparing, um, world building, 
moves first like rook dg1. But we'll think about it should we get there. c5 is illegal. That's all I have to say about c5. I guess that is a signal to speed up the general events a bit by going g6 instantly. Now there's an added resource of going dc5 and activating this rook. But I want to wait a bit to make sure he doesn't have queen b6. Had I known that he was going to go fg, maybe I wouldn't have pre-moved h takes g6. Maybe I would have thought about queen e6 check for a second, which probably would have won on the spot. But I didn't. I did pre-move h3 for no good reason, really. And this is where we're at. Still in decent shape, though, it has to be said. Because e6 is hanging, and there's also the little side plot of rook h7, rook dh1, rook h8 checkmate. Am I allowed to check my phone while I'm playing? I would guess so. H6, I want to take. Mm, take here. Mm. I don't like that he has a check after rook t6. But I'm not sure I'll be able to stop him giving me a check. Even though it upsets me. Hurts my feelings. And also objectively, I've misplayed this. I'm guessing I'm still okay. But there is not the quick checkmate that I was hoping to deliver. Very upsetting. All rook h6 tricks have now disappeared. I have to worry about my own back rank. It's a hard knock life. I'm so greedy, I can't take a time out and just make a luft like a normal person. I need to push my c pawn. Then again, a lot of normal people would have pushed their c pawn too. So there, I might be too harsh on myself. Too fake harsh. Queen c5 is a good move, threatening this pawn. Yeah, rook h6, uh, still no checkmate. Or is it gh, g7? Oof, complicated. King g7, queen h6, king f7. <laughs> this is my normal calculating speed. Mm. Shall we do it, just for drama? Thing is, I would win if I played some passive move. Well, after rook h6, I'm not sure if this works. Mm. Let's find out, shall we? Mm. Mm -hmm. I was stuck in this usual problem that quote-unquote intuitive players have. That I was trying to calculate it all the way to the checkmate. And I decided, ugh, too tough. Let's just do it and see what happens. So I was hoping something like this would be checkmate. Rook d7, king f8, queen h6, king e8. Uh, who knows? There's also... <laughs> okay, come on. You can do this, Jan. Rook d7. King f8, queen h6, king e8. Mm. I am a little embarrassed that this is taking so long, but my grandmasterly check giving skills are not very developed. I'm better at like making quiet moves that target something and can't be defended. If I have to calculate, check, 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 I'm sort of useless, but. After all this whining, I did find a way. I did find a mate. Hmm. 
Drama, baby. Oof, that was tense. Against Mr. Supra Atomico. Alright, can we play another game of chess? I believe we are allowed to play another one. What about Bob Kennedy? Is it okay if I call you Bob Kennedy? They probably called Robert Kennedy Bob Kennedy, did they not? E6 is a move I almost never play because white could go to e4 and I promise my first coach it's this very touching origin story to never play the French so I almost never go d4 e6. Well, they call him Bobby Kennedy. I, I did kind of know that. Robert Francis Bobby Kennedy was an American politician and lawyer from Massachusetts. That's also fun to say. We are learning so much on this show. Not about chess, but about personalities. We've learned about Snoska Borowski. We've learned about Robert Kennedy. Mm, that's, that's about it. E3. I normally castle here. But when I was a young man, I used to play B6 a lot. There's some funny lines after knight E2, then bishop A6 or C5. Knight F3 is, of course, perfectly legit. But if you want to go knight F3, it's considered to be slightly more accurate to start with bishop D3. And then after bishop b7 go um, knight to f3. Because if you start with it, I have this extra option of going knight e4, which forces a slightly clumsy move like bishop d2 or queen c2. Queen c2 is less clumsy, but that you don't need in all the lines. Here I could just take on d2, claiming the two bishops, but I like inflicting Mr. Robert with double pawns. Because these pawns might be hard to get rid of in the distant future. I believe that's what Mr. Nimzovich had in mind. I don't know what he had in mind. I cannot speak for Mr. Nimzovich. I have mentioned many a time that my system is not my favorite chess book. So I should not all of a sudden become a phony and start explaining Nimzovich's ideas which I do not share many times. Overprotection. <coughs> Queen c2, f5 or h6 or I don't know. How am I supposed to know all these things? Carnering is educating us about Senator Bobby. Didn't... he was killed, right? Poor Kennedys. There's a new Kennedy politician who people speak very highly of, right? I'm sorry for my, like, <coughs> very limited knowledge of things. I was gonna say US politics, but then I thought that might be slightly too narrow a statement. I believe limited knowledge of things is more accurate. Kennedy politician Meshushuchuch. New Kennedys, four members of clan who could carry political torch. Joseph P. Kennedy. I think I meant Joseph. Catherine Schwarzenegger? She's related to the Kennedys? Oh, I did not know that. Catherine Schwarzenegger is the daughter of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, and Mariah Shriver, granddaughter of Eunice Kennedy Shriver. Schwarzenegger, 23, only recently graduated from college, but the former first daughter of California has gained media attention and already written a book. Sounds a little thin as for a Kennedy-like politician career, but I had no idea they were related. Anyway, back to back to this Nimzovich pawn on c4. Gimme. That's all I have to say. And this is typically what happens, or what can happen, if you allow Black to execute his plan in the purest form, to just yeah attack this pawn. 
and take it. It's hard to defend because it's weak. And with the two pairs of minor pieces we exchanged earlier, it's also harder for white to create a kingside attack while I'm doing my build-up. Not saying that Robert Kennedy couldn't have played better here, but just illustrating that, yeah, this can be quite a typical scenario. Of course, knight c4 is also fine. Or rook c4, just keeping a stake on the c-file directly. Knight d2, rook c3, then queen c7, or whatever. Looked like a decent idea to me as well. Wow, Karl Nehring says, I met and spent a little time with RFK Jr. in 2002. Was not a pleasant experience. Okay, you can't tease us like that, Carl. Now we want the whole story. By the way, very impressed with everybody Carl knows. Because Carl is, is the only guy I trust here. Carl wouldn't make up stuff like that. Carl knows Greg Popovich. He knows RFK. Ah, RFK Jr. Fair enough, 2002. Well connected, Mr. Nearing. E4, good move before I continue building around here. Nehring is saying, basically, he came across as a spoiled, stuck-up jerk. Then again, in his defense, I'm trying to come across as a spoiled, stuck-up jerk pretty much every episode here. So, I can relate. Also, nah. I don't have a lot of strong opinions, but give us more detail, Carl. What happened? Was it a fundraiser? I know they do these tours, like these charity events, where you are then invited to stop by at the, whatever, I'm imagining it's a mansion, the Kennedy Mansion in Boston, and they tell you, now that you played this golf and donated this money, get to meet some of the Kennedys. But all the reports, reports I've heard about this, were quite positive. So that is not the picture painted in the media. Carl says, maybe I disgusted him. Ooh, there's more to this story. Why would you have disgusted him, Carl? You come across as a very polite man, don't you? As for this game, I almost lost some time, like, researching Kennedys. So I should make sure that does not happen. And a lot of weird problems with the clock today. It's like I'm Gary Kasparov without the chess skills. Hmm... Really struggling to get back into it. <laughs> Give me the spawn, please. Mm -hmm. Just to be annoying and play rook c1. For no other reason than to play with Robert Kennedy's feelings, hopes, expectations. That was unfortunate, but yeah, the night end game was tough to defend already. Some would say, and I might be one of those, there was no hope to defend it. What am I missing? We have a play zone hiccup here. Sometimes there's hiccups 
But we shall now continue to our next game of chess. Ugh, another strong player. I've had it with all you strong players coming out to get me while I'm just sitting here looking for a lovely whatever day it is. My best guess would be Tuesday. But I could be wrong. I have been uninformed about what day of the week it is before. Lovely Tuesday afternoon. And just like it. And his 2700 is coming here. He wants to crush me. He wants to go CD94 E5. I oh, know he doesn't. That's a pity. I was hoping he wanted to go CD94 E5. And just destroy me. Normally I would play E4 here. But since it's just like it's 71. And 71 indicates... I don't know what it indicates. That he's an even older gentleman than me. I will decide to play this line instead. If you're looking for any logic in that statement, please don't. Castle. There is this line with h3, rook e8, bishop e3, bishop h6. Which is supposed to be better for white. But I'll play this because I don't want just like it to blitz out more moves. I played this once before and I didn't enjoy myself all that much, to be honest with you. So I'm not sure why I'm repeating it. But I often do things that I struggle to explain afterwards. Mm, as for the position, do I go... Ah, no, f4 is a little loose. Don't know what to do here. Maybe I'll go here. Hmm, that's a strange move. Generally, I believe in white in these structures, because you have the two bishops, you have some extra space. But you have to handle with great care not to give black any counterplay. And once white manages to make his next 8000 moves, like queen d2, rook, or queen c2, rook, a1, b3, bishop somewhere, to d2, f4, g4, there will often be pressure. But it's a long, bumpy road until you get there. Because... Black has all these active, tricky pieces, and I, yeah, mm, am by no means convinced that I've played this accurately. I'll go a5, which is also a double-edged decision. End of statement. Generally, I wanna I wanna remove my king from this diagonal, so probably to h1 or h2, then move my bishop as well, then go f4. But it's it's a long, bumpy road, and I'm sure, just like it's 71, we'll try to make something happen on the queen side in the meantime. As I said, I believe in White and his structure, but it's a tricky position. So in blitz. Might be easier to play black and play, bang out some b6, rook b8, action Jackson. Mm. Calculating phase. Mm -mm. Still haven't calculated anything, just making faces. Queen h4, bishop g5. Queen d4 doesn't do anything good for me, so I must do something else if he goes queen h4. Rook fv1 is not really in the spirit of the position, but I'll do it anyway, because I'm a passer. I believe that sums it up fairly. He's probably planning to go rook e7, rook a8, which makes sense. Ah no, he's planning to go h6, g5, which also makes sense. Ugh, all these sensible ideas, just like 71. I'm not sure. Maybe we haven't talked about this in great detail. But I thought we, you and I, we had an understanding. That you're not trying too hard to checkmate me. Because we are great friends. I have no idea who just like 71 is. But I still thought that we understood each other. Now the position is extremely double-edged. He's weakened his king's position, but he's also opened some lines, diagonals. He's made sure that his knight cannot be challenged so easily on whatever square it was on. All that good stuff. Bishop h5. Ugh, so complicated. Rook e1, rook e1, knight f4, queen f4. 
I don't know, but I should just speed up. Ah, he's threatening knight d3. See? Good we talked about it. I have too many pieces on dark squares where his bishop is. So... Mm. Time to get some of those out of the way. Get out the way. Not sure this knight has any future on b6. <clears throat> but I couldn't think of anything better to do. Actually, six. Is this some genius combination? Ah, if I take, he wants to go queen e1, king h2, bishop e5. Which seems to work, unfortunately. So I won't be able to take. Great pity. I would have liked to take your knight. I'm not gonna lie. I like knights. M. Knight Shyamalan. Hmm. Ugh, it's getting sharper by the minute. I don't want to get checkmated, which I'm sure you understand, just like it's 71. Because I'm sure you just like it, and you also don't want to get checkmated. Therefore, I have decided not to allow you to go f3 and checkmate me. I do hope that you understand my thought process on that matter, and will not take it as a personal offense. Queen g5 is not a big fan of exchanging the queens. Can I take then queen e5? What's going on there? Ugh, it's also complicated. Maybe horsey here. Looks very clumsy. Mm. <clears throat> Should d4. Right. It's way too complicated for me. I will try not to get checkmated in one move. And as long as I accomplish that goal, I will operate under the assumption that I'm all right. <clears throat> I want to take here, but then king g7 and queen b1. I got very scared and then I remembered my goal not to get checkmated in one move. So I changed my mind. Whoa, tactics! But you're not the only one who can calculate half a move ahead just like it's 71. Actually, you probably are the only one. But f3 didn't work because of what I did. I'm guessing that I'm sort of winning here. But very sharp position. And earlier on, I was not that happy about my chances. Anyway, tens fight against chess like it's 71. Just like it. And thank you for the game and all that. Mm, let's find some fresh blood. What about Omar Little 07? A wire fan. Mr. Omar taking a break from robbing stash houses. And gets crushed here, playing a little game of chess. Also a Boston Celtics fan, which, yeah. How are you guys feeling over there? You think you want to throw all that money at Isaiah Thomas? He's kind of canceling himself out by his defensive um, shortcomings, is he not? So I think, here's what I think you should do. Try to trick Cleveland, give them whatever, Isaiah Thomas and Jay Crowder. Eh, whatever, one of your 80,000 draft picks. Get Kyrie Irving. Crush. Probably not gonna happen, probably Cleveland wouldn't do it. But I'd still like to see it. Alright, we are playing the Slav defense. Which is a legal opening. Played by many a world champion. Hmm.
In this position, d takes c4 is the classical Slav, e6 is the semi-Slav, a6 is the so-called Chebanenko Slav, and after dc4, a4, black is at another crossroads, and Omar Little decides to play the main move, bishop f5. e6, as Peter Svidler likes to play, is also a very legal line. Here, after bishop f5, knight e5, e6, f3, intending to play e4, is the main line. Normally, stuff gets very sharp quickly here, after bishop b4, e4, bishop e4, fe, knight e4, and so on and so forth. Because if you play more passively, as Omar has done, these positions should just be a little better for white, because this bishop is a bit passive, I've established central control, and actually I think bishop takes c4 was a mistake, I think I should have just played knight takes c4, but I was having too much fun. Mm. Yeah, I should have played knight takes c4 for sure. Because I don't really want to exchange this bad bishop, and now I have to worry about all kinds of stuff, like him attacking my d4 pawn. And, well, I guess white is still a bit better, but knight takes c4, keeping more pieces on the board, is logical to pronounce my space advantage. Now I'm slightly better with knight takes c4, I think it would have been much better already. a6 preparing b5, I have no interest of learning what you can do on the queen side, so I'll fix it by going a5, and then maybe. Maybe something will happen on these dark squares in the future, queen b3, rook d1, who knows. Queen c7 looks logical to keep an eye on this pawn. And prepare, I don't know, bishop b4 or bishop d6 in some lines. But what can I say? White is a little better here. He was trying to prepare c5, but I don't want that to happen, so I went rook d1. Now c5, both dc and d5 look good for white. Next order of business is probably to improve this knight. Ah, I should have gone to a4, I didn't pay attention. Ugh. That was a ridiculous. Very ridiculous. Knight a4 was, of course, the move threatening knight b6. Um, but I did not do it. So I put my knight on the worst square, and I'm gonna have to live with the consequences. The sense of ineptitude that comes from misplacing your knight, from mistying your tie, from spotting such cheapos and then acting like it's not a big deal. Pretending like you're a big shot because you're defeating a 1700 player with a yeah not very complicated tactic, you know that kind of thing. Now I'm exchanging the pawn up, so the fish has been cooked in the pan. Hmm, how do we wrap this up? Let's go home. One more game after this one. And then we are done for today's banter. Banter fun. Fun with banter? Bentophilon? Nothing rolls of the tongue today. Counterplay! Hmm. Hmm. All right, I'll play along. Check. I can't decide. Rook d was probably winning, but it bothered me. After queen b1, king f2, queen b2, king g3, that he can still cover the bishop with queen b4. So, why the rush? Why not make my king slightly nicer home on h2? Now, push Harry the h-pawn. And if he goes to h7, he will block his own 
own king's uh, uh, escape route. Well, if he takes, he will be a rook down. The end is near for Omar Little. Probably was betrayed. Thanks for the game, Omar. I'm reading stream troubles. Hope it's nothing serious. We have one more game to get through. We were almost at the end anyway. So let's play our last game and hopefully crush somebody else to make them reconsider if all this time spent playing chess is really worth their while. What about Mr. Gazai Yuno? Gaza, you know, German flag, but sounds quite. So, doesn't sound German. Go c4, c5. What can I do? Knight f3. That's what I normally do. But here, that's a big choice. g6, e5, knight f6. Many a move is possible. e3 is not my main move. I would normally play d4 here. But I'm trying to, you know, spice it up. Once in a while, change up lines a little bit. After e3, the main reaction is e6, d4, d5, which might not be everybody's cup of tea. g6, intending to meet d4 with c, d, e, d, d5, is another playable line. He goes e6, I'll go d4. I'm expecting the move d5. He takes first, fair enough. Now d5. Here... I could play all kinds of um, general consideration moves like a3. I was also thinking if I'm in time to go c5 here already. I'm not sure. If he goes bishop e7, I believe I will play c5. And uh, I don't know if I'll be happy or sad. Hmm. b4 or bishop d3? Bishop d3, the point would be to fight against knight e4, which is a typical idea for these structures. b4 would just be, of course, a useful move in general. Here you always have to think about b6, b4, a5, but it felt like I'm in time to keep my pawn chain alive without two big losses, either rook b1 or maybe even push b5. We'll think about it. Once we reach that very critical juncture of this game. He takes, which is probably a good decision. Yeah, it is actually a good decision. Mm -hmm. Now there's e5 and in general bc. It's not the biggest dream that white has here. Rook b8 looks a little slow. Could have gone back bishop f4 directly, but it feels like Bishop f4 won't run away as an option, so I'll just castle first. Yeah, rook b8, I'm not a big fan of. I'm trying to calculate whatever, e5, but oh, he goes queen c7. He now wants to fight against my bishop f4 plans, but will he be able to do it? <laughs> Looks like Gaza Yuno lost a bit of time there. Not sure if I can go for direct punishment. Knight c7, rook b8, bishop b5. Looks a little all over the place, but also looks fun. Let's see if that works. Mm -hmm. I could have just played, quote unquote, normally with a good position. But why not? 
ask some questions. Still don't have any decisive threats, I'm afraid. But it's still unpleasant for black to play as well. Knight e5, there is queen takes c7, so I wasn't winning directly. And therefore, I might have to, I don't know, prepare this entry maybe by going bishop g3, so the bishop is no longer hanging after queen takes c7, or just do something like knight to a6. He goes knight e4, he probably wants to annoy me with some knight c3. I don't want to be annoyed, so I'll stop it. But actually, ugh, I'm drifting. Okay, time to focus again. Yeah, f6, for example, stops me from delivering my cruel knight e5 intentions. And I should, of course, well, I should have tried to do better. Having said all that, I'm still all right. Just did not manage, manage, manage Atra to finish this game off immediately. E5, so aggressive. Can you do that? I don't know. My best guess is this was not the plan. But what do I know? All right, I'm a simple man. Gimme. Ugh, that was terrible. Ooh. Not thinking straight. One should never allow a sacrifice like rook f3 in such a position where all my pieces are on the queen side. And my king is left alone. I have no idea if it's winning or anything, but just generally, it's insane to allow such things. So, time to hopefully correct my mistakes. Ugh, but a6 is hanging. No, I'm drifting. Am I gonna lose the last game? Lost now. I missed bishop takes a4, knight takes g4, rook takes a6. Fortunately, my opponent missed it too. And now I'm probably winning, not losing. But yeah, those were some anxious moments in our very last game of the day. <clears throat> Gaza Yuno here after getting, yeah, outplayed for most of the game. He had a big chance to just win after my ill-advised combination. I felt smart about myself going for this knight e5, simplifying, but turns out this is not a simplification. I would have enjoyed all that much. Anyway, all's well that ends with me crushing all of you. And by crushing, I mean winning in whatever unfair, lucky, undeserved way possible. So thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Banter Blitz, because this is the show where we play interesting chess games. That's a lie. Um, this is the show where we always do the same stuff and hope it still works. Maybe One Trick Pony Blitz would be a more appropriate name. Thanks for watching. Um, see you next time around, whenever that is. <laughs>